ang Sri Lanka daw ang nangunguna ngayon sa South Asia sa larangan ng infrastructure development. Kagaya ng Pilipinas, naglunsad ang Sri Lanka ng isang ambisyosong infrastructure development project para mapaganda ang kanilang road network, maayos ang kanilang airports, rail systems, telecommunication at elektrisidad. Isa sa pinakaambisyoso nilang proyekto ay ang $40 billion megapolis. Lain ng pagtatag ng megapolis na maresolba ang problema sa trapiko, basura at informal settlers. Megapolis Development Plan actually is uh, one of the flagship projects we uh, sort of uh, in, uh, started in uh, early 2015 uh, in order to make the western part of the country a big megapolis. By international standards, uh, what you call megapolis is a place where a population more than 5 million lives. Uh, if you take Colombo and suburbs, so we have very small amount of uh, people, less than 1 million. Uh, so, uh, Colombo being uh, the historically the center of uh, economic and financial center, it has a lot of congestion pressures, the traffic pressures, uh, the uh, various uh, pollution, the, the, the shanties and all that. So, we just wanted to uh, develop the, I mean, uh, the broaden the horizons of the entire area. Noong 1960s, nagtungo ang presidente ng Singapore na si Lee Kuan Yew sa Sri Lanka. Nakita niya ang sumusulong na infrastructure development sa bansang ito at sinabi niyang ito ang gagayahin sa Singapore. Ilang dekadang nakaraan ay makikita na ngayon ang transformasyon ng Singapore sa isang progresibo at modernong bansa. Pero ang Sri Lanka naiwan sa pag-unlad. Bakit hindi na ipagpatuloy ng Sri Lanka ang progreso nito? Malaking salik dito ang tatlong dekada na pagkalugmok ng bansa sa isang civil war. Ayon kay Sri Lankan Central Bank Governor Indrajit Kumaraswamy, noong 2008 lamang natapos ang gera sa bansa, kung kaya't kinailangang umpisahan muli nila ang naantalang infrastructure development. Gayunpaman, nagpatuloy pa rin ang pagsulong sa mga bahagi ng bansa na hindi naman apektado ng gera. The war was certainly very destructive, uh, both in terms of human lives, uh, uh, property, infrastructure, as well as the prospects of the country. Having said that, uh, there was a great deal of resilience also. Uh, the economy recorded about 4% or a little over 4% growth over that period. And for much of those 27, 30 years of the conflict, the actual instability, the fighting was re restricted largely to one part of the country, the north and the east. Gumaganda na daw sana ang pag-unlad ng kanilang ekonomiya dahil sa tulong ng Japan kung hindi lamang sumiklab ang gera. The G7 forced Japan to revalue the yen. So with a strong currency, they decided they'd have a strategy to export capital. And four countries were chosen as the platforms for their investment and Sri Lanka was one. And the other three countries benefited enormously. For instance, the famous Toyota supply chains in Thailand really came about from that period. But we were the fourth country, but we didn't get the payoff because really shortly after that, the conflict started. And in fact, there was a team of Japanese investors in Colombo when we had some of the worst instability in the war. And uh, meant that there was an enormous lost opportunity. Nang matapos ang gera ay tinangka daw ng kanilang gobyerno na bilisan ang kanilang pagsulong para agad makabawi. Pero para daw sa sakyan na nag-overheat ang kanilang ekonomiya. That peace dividend should be driven by sound macro fundamentals and structural reforms. Not through creating a sugar high through inappropriate macroeconomic policies, which is what happened, and then we had to stabilize. Pinilakas daw nila ang infrastructure drive sa bansa, subalit nakalimutan nila ang pangangailangang isulong ang kanilang export industry. Hindi rin daw sila gumawa ng mga polisiya para dumami ang foreign direct investments kung kaya't hindi pumasok ang pera sa kanilang bansa. We needed to be much more rigorous in terms of the cost of those projects. Also, it was important in getting the mix of investments after the war. FDI and export should have been our key kind of platforms, key pillars of our post-war development. 
But that didn't really happen. Instead, the focus was on non-tradables and effective protection went up. So FDI performance was relatively low and exports as a percentage of GDP fell. So those are some of the lessons now to learn that, yeah, we, we infrastructure is important, but you need to focus on the rate of return. Dahil dito ay nahirapan silang bayaran ang kanilang domestic at foreign loans. Dagdag pa dito ang problema ng korupsyon. Even the ongoing projects, uh, some of them were suspended uh, pending investigation to ascertain whether they are corruption of the previous government, you know, like, like uh, you know, investigations. And after one and a half years, two years, all of them were resumed. Therefore, you can see that very drastic slowing down. Of In addition to that, government has ballooning of uh, domestic and foreign debts. Dahil dito ay nagpalit daw ng strategiya ang kanilang pamahalaan para umayos ang kanilang ekonomiya at mabayaran ang kanilang mga pagkakautang. First thing is to make sure that our macro fundamentals are sound. And the main source of instability in the system is the budget. So we're going to moving towards forward-looking, proactive, data-driven monetary policy formulation. Uh, we have a new monetary law act, a new act for the central bank, uh, which will give it greater independence, but also greater, have greater accountability attached to it. And as part of flexible inflation targeting, you have to use the exchange rate as the first line of defense. So we have to have a flexible exchange rate policy. In the past, sometimes we've tried to defend a particular rate and have depleted reserves as a result. So we moved away from that. We introduced open market economy to the country. Uh, then as a result of that, uh, we need infrastructure development uh, uh, in order to promote uh, foreign direct investments, uh, many economic initiatives. Isa sa mga naging malaking problema ng Sri Lanka ang kontrobersyal na Hambantota Port. Inumpisahan itong proyekto sa pamamagitan ng pangungutang sa China ng $1.1 billion. Noong 2017, hindi na mabayaran ng Sri Lanka ang utang nito para sa daungan sa Hambantota. Dahil dito ay napilitan itong magbigay ng 99-year lease sa China. Binigyan din nila ang China ng mga tax concessions. Isang kasunduan ng pinirmahan ng China Merchant Sport Holdings Company at Sri Lanka Ports Authority na nagbibigay ng 70% ng kontrol sa kumpanyang Chino. May mga kritisismo na magiging masama para sa Sri Lanka ang naturang kasunduan. Tinukoy ni Bernard Gunantilike, ang chairman ng Pathfinder Foundation, isang advocacy at research think tank sa Sri Lanka kung saan nagkamali ang kanilang pamahalaan. <laughs> The problem on our part is not the decision that was bad or not the timing that was bad but inability of the particular project to return on the investment uh, in a particular manner that it could sustain or meet the economic uh, demands that would need so that at least it should have been able to pay back the loan installments Uh, in a regular manner. So that was the uh, issue. I think we probably didn't have a holistic view of that investment. Uh, we made the investment, uh, but the ancillary investments that needed to support the port, it took some time in coming. But now that's being rectified. That's been rectified. So learning is, you know, you have to have a okay, you build something, make sure you get a high enough rate mm -hmm. of return. So right now uh, you feel that that the government has done uh, um, the best in order to resolve that problem that you have? So, so the port, yes. I mm. mean, A, mm. we were able to switch from, from debt to equity, which helped us with our external obligations. Uh, and B, uh, there is going to be a industrial zone in that area. Uh, so that's the right strategy, but we're not moving fast enough. We need to move faster to develop the industrial zone. There are various administrative uh, and bureaucratic bottlenecks which are holding back uh, progress so we need to go faster but i think we have got the overall uh, strategy right kabilang din daw sa mga problema na kanilang kinaharap ang pagpopondo sa kanilang mga proyekto 
expectations are very high and they are because uh, they want to implement many projects what was the issue is now uh, what uh, it was very difficult to us to go for uh, implementing all projects because due to limited fiscal space no that's why we are now with this we are talking about funding arrangement innovative financial methodologies isa sa mga pinakamalaking proyektong isinasagawa ngayon ang 1.5 billion dollar port city sa Colombo na bahagi ng pinaplanong megapolis Tinaguli ang Colombo International Finance City, ito ay magiging extension ng business district ng Colombo. Itong scale model ng Port City of Colombo, ang mga proponents ng proyektong ito ay nagpunta sa iba't ibang mga bansa kagaya ng China, Singapore at Pilipinas sa Bonifacio Global City upang makakalap ng mga ideya at mabuo ang konsepto nitong proyekto. Sinaasahang sa loob ng 25 taon ay matatapos na ang mega project na ito. We are going to draw in uh, both local and international investments. And in the process, we'll be building up um, a build up area about 5.7 million square meters of space. So you can imagine the amount of um, uh, commercial and retail activities, even residential, to house the people. At the same time, they'll be creating some 83,000 jobs in Port City. And this will create employment for the people and also jobs that we are not even familiar right now because the world is changing and evolving so fast. Isa ito sa mga unsolicited proposals na sinasabing konsepto ni dating Pangulong Mahinda Rajapaksa. Ito ang 269 hectare reclamation area kung saan itatayo ang Port City of Colombo. Tapos na ang reklamasyon at inuumpisahan na ang pagtatayo ng mga infrastruktura. Inaasahang ito magiging pangunahing commercial, residential at business destination sa buong South Asia. Ayon kay Tham, istrategiko ang lokasyon ng Sri Lanka kung kaya't kumpiyansa siyang magtatagumpay itong bilyong dolyar na proyekto. The location of Sri Lanka is fabulous. It is uh, along the Belt Road Initiative that you know, uh, has been trading with China and the rest of the world for more than 2,500 years. And similar for Singapore, our geographical location performed this role of uh, being the uh, transshipment hub in the region. So, choosing Port City as an extension, which is just next to the port, uh, means that we can tap into this industry and this market and position ourselves for the uh, well, local and international business to come and uh, use this as a springboard for the rest of uh, South Asia. Di tulad daw ng Hamban Tota Port, ang Port City ay isang public-private partnership project. This project is a um, private-public uh, partnership and we as a Czech Port City is the vehicle that has invested in the money. There's no loan by the government. Um, so, uh, in fact, the burden is on us to make sure this project works from a commercial basis. And again, because uh, it's a joint project with the government, we also want uh, the government to be actively involved in order to push this forward. Aminato si Tam na kahit na maayos ang progreso ng kanilang proyekto, may mga hamon silang kinakaharap. We have to go through, I think, 20 odd agencies just to clear uh, before we can even start reclamation and uh, move on with all the other, you know, processes. And uh, it takes a bit of, uh, you know, effort too. But we are happy to say that we have overcome that together with the help of the agencies, the government and the people, and we have cleared all those. And of course, on and off, there will still be some issues on the environment. Uh, but I guess, as any projects, we have to strike a balance between environment and also development. Uh, at this point in time, we are still waiting for the land titles to be issued. So we are not able to sign any SMP uh, agreement, uh, but we are almost there. Uh, and we hope to get this thing sorted out by end of this year. Kumpiyansa naman si Tam sa pagtatagumpay ng proyekto. We believe that this project will continue to offer value to uh, investors, especially those who are looking at long-term uh, investment returns from uh, Port City. Ang Port City ay magiging bahagi ng itinatayong megapolis, isang megapolis authority ang nais na itatag ng pamahalaan upang kaagad may patupad ang mga plano. Pero makalipas ang ilang taon, ay bigu pa rin sila na itayo ito. Uh, we were planning to have one with uh, very fully-fledged authority with uh, superpower to handle uh, all, but uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, with the inherent uh, nature of our constitution, because you know, uh, within our main government, we have nine provincial governments. With the 13th amendment, which was introduced a couple of years back, uh, for certain acts to be passed in the parliament, we had to uh, uh, get the consent of these provincial governments. 
but uh, by the time we started the there were lots of uh, uh, lot of confusions and lot of uh, misunderstandings you know the provincial people thinks that we will invade their territories and all that uh, so ultimately uh, government started uh, putting some acts uh, for their consents and uh, it was a it was not successful therefore government thought uh, just to step down and wait for a while without uh, putting forward the act of uh, the, uh, the 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 uh, megapolis uh, authority dahil daw sa problema sa mga local government officials ay natatagalan ang pagpapatupad ng megapolis so very difficult to get them out of their silos because they think uh, this is our our territory no, nobody should come and invade this so we had this problem because under megapolis we have transport we have power we have highways we have uh, many other areas uh, for which we had uh, separate ministries but if we had that fully fledged powerful authority we could have very easily uh, we would have taken these people into one umbrella uh, but uh, the uda act was not uh, strong enough for that purpose but somehow with certain uh, strategies we managed to get these people also into our process i said director general ng department of national planning na sri lanka na si sanjaya mudalige isang proper planning methodology ang kanilang ipinatutupad para matiyak ang tagumpay ng bawat proyekto our we have a 28 subsectors of the economy according to the economic development yeah, because we have nine main sectors again these nine sectors are divided into uh, 28 subsectors and each sectors expectations are very high and they are because uh, they want to implement many projects uh, according to robert kaplan uh, the american scholar he says uh, in 21st century the most important ocean is going to be indian ocean because uh, southwest uh, trade transaction happen we are right in the middle of the indian ocean so our uh, our location is very uh, very important very critical so it's attractive for people so what is your vision for infrastructure development in sri lanka <laughs> converting uh, sri lanka into south asia's socio economic hub that is the main idea in line with that idea also that we want to convert uh, sri lanka into some kind of knowledge based economy uh, coming uh, decades tinaguri ang pearl of the indian ocean ang sri lanka ay nasa hilagang bahagi ng indian ocean at dinataanan ng mga major sea lanes sa rehiyon 50% ng pangangalakal sa mundo ay dumadaan dito kaya ganoon na lamang kaestratehiko ang lokasyon ng naturang bansa at sinasabing mahalaga para sa mga superpowers gaya ng Estados Unidos at China. Anong aral ang mapupulot ng Pilipinas sa karanasan ng Sri Lanka?